Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're diving into something that might surprise you. We're looking at schools as peacemakers. Hmm. You might not typically think about classrooms and conflict zones together, but in India, that's exactly what's happening. Right. We're gonna unpack how schools are transforming battlefields in the most unexpected ways. It is really fascinating to see schools becoming these symbols of hope and resilience. Yeah. And even democracy in places where you would least expect it, regions ravaged by conflict. Absolutely. So to really grasp this, let's picture ourselves in Sukuma district, Chhattisgarh. Okay. This area has been stuck in this long-standing conflict between Maoist insurgents and the government. Right. Now imagine the impact on the community schools are reduced literally to rubble. Yeah. Generations of children deprived of their right to an education. It's a It's a it's a devastating it's thought. Absurd picture for sure. The impact on education was awful. And to make matters worse, you had the Salwa Judah movement. Right. Which was active in the early 2000s and they turned schools into strategic targets. Right. Wow. Which just further fueled the violence. Mm. They were occupied by armed groups and many were just demolished. It's hard to imagine that despair of like seeing those empty spaces where these places of learning once stood. Yeah. But amidst this chaos, a small glimmer of hope emerged porta cabins. Okay. You can think of them as these makeshift classrooms, almost like a temporary band-aid on a much deeper issue. Right. Well, the porta cabins did provide some access to education, mm -hmm. but they came with their own set of problems. Yeah. Can you imagine trying to learn in a cramped porta cabin? Oh, wow. Sharing a single textbook between maybe four or five students? Wow. That was a reality for many children in these temporary learning spaces. That really puts things into perspective. Yeah. So we have this backdrop of conflict, demolished schools, yeah, and the yeah. challenges of these porta cabins. But here's where things get really interesting. Okay. 2018, okay. a youth-led movement starts advocating for something really remarkable, reopening those closed and demolished schools. Wow. Can you imagine the bravery? It took for these young people to stand up and demand education in such a volatile environment. Absolutely, it was a pivotal moment. These communities, led by young people, were sending a very clear message. Yeah. They were no longer willing to let violence dictate their future. Wow. They understood that education was their right and they were courageous enough to demand it. And their demands were not just heard, they were met with action. This is where the shiksha dutes come in. Right. Imagine being a shiksha dut, a young person who is essentially a teacher, a peace ambassador, and a beacon of hope all rolled into one. This is amazing. They stepped up to teach in these reopened schools, often facing threats from both sides of the conflict. These individuals are true heroes. Yeah. They put themselves at risk to ensure that children had access to learning. Right. They understood that education was the key to breaking the cycle of violence. Yeah. And their bravery played a vital role in bringing education back to these communities. It's truly inspiring. And here's the really remarkable part. These reopened schools became more than just places of learning. Right. They became catalysts for broader change, even impacting democracy in the region. How did that happen? Well, with schools back in operation, marginalized communities who had long been excluded from democratic processes finally had a platform. They became polling stations, mm -hmm. a place for these villagers to exercise their right to vote for the very first time. And get this. These schools earned a very special name, Vote Whale Schools, mm. literally meaning schools where polling booths can be set up. Wow. It's such a powerful image. Yeah, it really is. It highlights the profound connection between education, empowerment, and democratic participation. It's almost poetic. These schools went from being literally caught in the crossfire to becoming sanctuaries of learning and symbols of a community reclaiming their future. Absolutely. We're hearing about these incredible transformations in Chattisgar, and it makes you wonder, could this model, this idea of schools as peacemakers, work in other conflict zones? It's a big question, yeah, right? Yeah. The Chattisgar case definitely offers some valuable insights, yep. but copying it exactly requires really understanding the specific situation. Security is a huge concern, obviously. Yeah. And getting both sides to genuinely agree is really important. Absolutely. You can't just force it on them. There needs to be that understanding from both the government and the insurgents that education is the foundation for lasting peace. Exactly. It needs to be something they both value not something they fight over. Have there been any signs of this change in perspective? Well, there have been some encouraging things happening. Okay. Some Maoist leaders have actually started to say that schools are important in their areas too. Wow. They're even saying that education is important to empower their communities. That's a huge step. 
It is. It sounds like they're realizing that education benefits everyone. Right, even within armed groups. Exactly. But let's be real for a second. Even with this change, there are still going to be massive obstacles to overcome. Oh, absolutely. Ugh. We can't just build a few schools and expect these deep-rooted problems to just disappear. Yeah, it's more complicated than that. We have to understand what's really causing these conflicts in the first place. Right, like what are the root causes here? Things like poverty, inequality, a lack of resources, and even just historical grievances. These are all things that fuel these conflicts. Education can be a powerful tool for change, but it can't fix all these problems on its own. So it's about a lot more than just bricks and mortar. We're talking about an entire system right. that not only supports these schools, but actually tries to deal with the issues that are causing the conflict in the first place. It's a complex challenge. It is a complex challenge. It needs a multi-pronged approach. Mm. We need inclusive education systems that work for all children, no matter their background or their beliefs. And and good governance, transparency, and accountability are also crucial for building trust and making sure that peace lasts. When you really think about it, it's amazing that something like education can be such a force for peace. Mm. These vote whale schools, as they're called, they're not just buildings. Right. They represent so much more. They're a symbol. Resilience, hope, a, a community's choice to choose education over violence. What I think is so incredible is that ripple effect. You empower citizens through education. You're not just giving them knowledge and skills. Right. You're changing society itself. You encourage critical thinking, yeah. more dialogue, and new ways to resolve conflict peacefully. It's like planting a seed. Exactly. That impact might not be immediately obvious, but it grows and it spreads. Right. And it creates a better future for the next generation. It shows that even in the darkest times, hope can still emerge. Yeah. And education can be so powerful for creating positive change. This deep dive has been truly eye-opening. It really makes you think what other possibilities are out there when we start to see schools not just as places of learning, but as these cornerstones of peace. It's something to think about for sure, and maybe even something we can all act on in our own communities and beyond. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey, and until next time, keep exploring.